everyone, and welcome to another Spark of Mediocrity production. You see, I remembered it this time. I, I always have trouble with the memorizing Switching something back and, and deviating. Forth between, uh, yeah, original intro. Yeah, and this is this is season four. So season one through three, I think we still we did like Uprising, we did Outsiders, and we did Dynasty. I think not in that order, oh, but that's, that's that sounds about yeah, right. yeah. Um, I and mean, then we skip Bright Lights because you know oh, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> but season four is back. Because Heavy Hitters is a, is a really cool set. I think they've done a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, my name's Eric. Joined off with my co-creator, co-commentator, co-caster, co-patriot, Rob. Hello. But we're also joined by OY. We tried to get K. We really did. Um, next time, we're going to get K. And One of these days. It's going to be a party. But we have uh, Oliver and Yichin. Everyone's probably seen a lot of Yichin. If you've gone to any event <laughs> in the States in the last like couple of years, you've probably well, seen him walking around. Ho hopefully not too and much. <laughs> Hopefully not too much. Have you seen the one guy in the mask in most events? That's probably Oliver. So <laughs> combined, that's O and Y. Um, and then me and Rob are the two idiots in hoodies. So without further ado, we'll do a bit of a primer on heavy hitters. And this isn't, this isn't a deep dive. This is just like kind of initial thoughts about sets heroes in relation to kind of overall power level and kind of what where we think it fits. Uh, the only comments I will have is I think they did a good job not over tuning the shit out of guardian which i was a little bit afraid of uh because that's such a precarious class that's had so much success i don't know if starvo counts as a guardian at this point it just counts as a starvo but mm -hmm. like even starvo like old him like these these classes are just, like such powerful cards since welcome to wraith i was a little bit worried um when they came out but i i think they did a pretty good job in balancing especially the legendary like i think they were very uh reserved with how they dealt with a lot of the guardian cards so i like that um, I also kind of like going back to Welcome to Wraith meta, where not meta per se, but Welcome to Wraith esque heroes, where you're just dealing with a lot of like either big attacks or just like a lot more clean gameplay and not like here's like a million actions I'm gonna do on my turn and then my instants are now actions and then you have like a you know what I mean, uh, like. No ice, no like wizards, no crazy like creepers plays or rune chance or whatever. It's it's we need a we need a bit of a break I think, and so I kind of like that they, they went back here. No sneaky play. Um, it's it's all no, very straightforward. There there are like sneaky plays, but not like I'm gonna take thirty minutes to think about my play and then do it play, which has you know it's, it's nice it's yeah. nice. Uh, I don't know what what, what are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, personally I think it's uh it's good to go back to the W WTR heroes. Because um, uh, when I played WTR, it was a set that really rewarded good blocks and yeah. blocking well. So I hope this is um, also in the same vein of the, as that. Yeah. yeah. Interaction, I think, is really key. Because I, I was a little bit worried when they said Reinar was coming back. Because I think Intimidate is an extremely hard thing to balance. Because it's just like the pinnacle of uninteractiveness is Intimidate. It's literally like... You have no head. Go nuts. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, don't, I don't really know how Ryan yeah. will play out. We're not doing Ryan, so <laughs> we're not going to. True. Yeah. yeah. I'm a pretty big fan of the set as well. Um, I think limited wise, um, it'll definitely reward good blocks. Um, it'll be a little bit harder to block out everything, uh, which I think is the intention with all the three, four, sevens and all the wage golds. Um, yeah. But uh, there's going to be less tricks in the format, um, but it's going to be, and everything's going to be more, a little bit more heads up. So it's going to be a lot of like um, asking questions, and then your opponent has to figure out if they want to answer them or not. Demand answers. I love it. No aggro mid range. It's just like, does your deck ask questions or not? Yeah. It's, it's so much better. What about you, Rob? You just yeah. like KO? You just like running around and like playing go, go Boom. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that with all the wagering and clashing in this set, uh, it might lead to some pretty uh, swingy gameplay, uh, no pun intended, but basically like, you know, one hero gets the benefit or the other one gets the benefit. You can kind of snowball quite a bit. So I feel like uh, we'll have some very exciting games with this set. So I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, as, as a reminder to if we have new viewers that haven't seen any of our any of our uh, Spark of Mediocrity, essentially, we take most, if not all, the new heroes, pit them against each other, pit them against some of the quote unquote meta heroes. It was that was a lot of years ago before when there's a very clear like number one, number two hero. Um and kind of go from initial deck building all the way up to like the deck tech after games and show our thought process about matchups and cards. So that's kind of what we're gonna be doing. I'll start it off 
with um, Betsy skin in the game. I had to read that one. I, I, I have not memorized everyone's <laughs> catchphrase yet, but skin in the game. Um, I'll admit when Betsy was released, I was super not impressed. Like I thought she was, there's no possible way this hero can compete with Bravo. Um, and this is just like kind of a sad attempt to just get another guardian to fill the void that they thought guardian would need. But then they started uh, revealing, obviously they started revealing more cards, but the the good time chapeau i'm pretty sure that's that's the helmet mm -hmm. is so so much more powerful than the other rare equipment at least in a classic constructive setting that it then makes so much more sense for betsy because of the hero power itself to just like capitalize every single time and just turn gold into a distinct payoff because i think turning gold into payoffs is the one thing that different heroes do like varying levels of efficient right um a lot of them can create a lot of gold, like especially Olympia, Victor, but like using the gold effectively, I think is going to be key for any of these heroes. And I didn't really see it for Betsy because Betsy just wanted to wager a lot to try to get the overpower on the plus one. So because of good time chapeau, I was able to kind of string together a couple really good turns with gold production and then keep the snowball rolling with uh, her payoff cards uh, prime to fight, which is a really big one. Uh, pretty easy for you to actually just like keep a four card hand and hit for like 15 overpower. Like it's it's not actually that hard, like money where your mouth is primed to fight with your double tokens, uh, as well as like bet big. And like your turn zero bet big on overpowers can be super nice. Like there's no guarantee they can block your overpower turn one or they give you armor for it. Like it's, that's cool. That's fine. Um, but the rest of the deck, I feel like it's still... Guardian has just like so many good blue three blocks that she just gets the Guardian base without even have trying like cards like Macho Grande, like Terra Sunder, Thunderquake, stuff like that. So she she has a good base, but I I, I think with uh, the, her clash mechanic, it, it'll be interesting to see how much trouble she's gonna have getting over like tall heroes compared to something like Bravo. I'm not I'm not 100% sure, but she does play faster. Like I feel like the the dead hands are just kind of not a thing when you have gold to cycle your hands. And I think gold <laughs> cycling your hands are going to benefit her the most because she's the one I see with the most dead hands out of the four heroes. Um as far as just like do the thing though I don't have go again cuz I can't create vigor. Um sorry, agility, not vigor. Cuz right. she doesn't she doesn't really create agility. So you know, it's a, a lot easier to counter, it's like, Guardians in general, because it's just go tall. One big attack, have some on hits. That's about it. So, that's my overall, that was my overall idea, building her. A uh, couple buffs. Uh, I'm gonna, the last thing I'll say is I'm gonna try to revive the Thumpening. I really love Thump <laughs> as a card. I've always loved Thump as a card. I don't know, everyone who knows me, like, gives us tails, like, Nat season, whatever. I just love Thump. Uh, I'm going to try my hardest to run six thumps and <laughs> thump as much as I can. <laughs> uh, because I think she needs it because she doesn't have a lot of disruptive on hits other than like uh, like the concuss or something like that. I think that's okay. It's like hand or, but it's not like that efficient in my view because you still need to buff it. Whereas Thump is like dominate, discard a card. That's it. Like it's just, it's just much harder to get around thump so that's gonna be my question mark to see if <laughs> see if i can just make a thump death <laughs> um that was betsy I don't, I don't know what i don't know what you guys think if you have any thoughts at all i think i think it's pretty good i think the main weakness that she's gonna have to contend with is having a lower um average block value than bravo is yeah. because she'll need to run all the all the pumps uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, I think the main thing that you want to do as Betsy is get tempo early and then just maintain that tempo with a bit of disruption and mostly like your on hits to just yeah. constantly like carry over your, your wagers and your lights and your vigors to just constantly like hit them for like 10, 10, 10, 15, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 fair. You, I think the good time chapeau is like without that helmet, this deck wouldn't function in my view. It would not be considered a good deck at all. But because of that... Yeah. Uh, I think it definitely has legs to do that kind of play style, and that's kind of what I'm going for. So that's Betsy. 
Um, Oliver, talk to me about Kasai. The Golden Sands? Uh, the I Golden Sands. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm just know. guessing. Okay. <laughs> but this adult Kasai likes to focus on gold, as people have already figured out, because they spoiled it at Barcelona. So it's a pretty big departure from her copper-centered young hero. Um, yeah. So I think she's... I'm pretty sure she's, she still uses Centauri Sabers. I did think about, like, using Hot Streak and, uh, like, Warrior's Valor and other stuff. Because uh, that <laughs> Hot Streak and um, Warrior's Valor is kind of a funny combo where you can mostly likely get it go again if you want to against most decks. But uh, I just didn't have the space for it. So it's just, like, your usual Kasai deck in Blitz where you have, like, your run-throughs and you're always going to be swinging one Saber after the other. Uh, the problem is you have to figure out your mana curve a little bit more because the second saber is not free. So you ha have to think about the pumps that you can run. So you have to run a little bit more efficient zero cost attack reactions or pumps. Um, so yeah, my deck mostly focuses around like a lot of go again from Blade Runner, Hit and Run, and then uh, try and finish them off with like a uh, CNC or uh, Nourishing Emptiness because you can banish your, your attack actions with Kasai to give Nourishing Emptiness like dominate and stuff. So that's like yeah. my main game plan. Um, I am running Blood on her hands because Spoils of War is still a good card. Um, yeah. I'm only running two of in, my, in my current deck. And then Raisin Army is also pretty good because like you can, that's your gold payoff. So yeah. yeah, the overall game plan is just like hit them with like efficient attacks. You have like two card or seven to nine damage and then um eventually you'll get enough value where you generate enough tokens where you can either go off with a big blood on hand stay, uh, turn or raise an army and then just go wide and have a bunch of allies um right yeah so that's pretty much where i'm at, at the, with the deck i feel like it's still a little too fair <laughs> uh i've played i played against alan a couple of games today and it seemed fine it seemed to work but I feel like I, I might be missing something. Yeah, just based on, like, your average turn cycles? Yeah. That's fair. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but there was something else that was missing. But, uh... Yeah, that's currently what I have for Kasai. Do you do you have raise, raise an army in the main or the side? Uh, in the main. Like, you, you're always going to want to uh, try and get as much gold as possible anyways. Because, yeah. oh, also, I'm also running cash in, too, so cash in for the extra gold tokens <laughs> um you want to sometimes pop a gold token to draw a card so your yellows will effectively be a blue if uh at, at minimum uh, yeah. oh yeah the problem with kasai is that she wants to run a lot of yellows and yellows are like notoriously pretty under rate so yeah. you have to find your good yellows to run and somehow get into your graveyard without like falling behind I mean, you, yeah, you, you can block, but it doesn't feel yeah. like great. Yeah, so like Slice and Dice Yellow is probably the only on rate card. Uh, yeah. Yellow Blade Runners, obviously, and then there's like the Yellow Hidden Runs. So, yeah, I have to like tinker around with the deck a little bit more, but that is currently where I'm at. All right, that's fair. I always thought, like, beforehand, like, size play patterns were just kind of like swing the sword. Um,. Go again, hit and run CNC or some some random thing like that, and that would just mm -hmm. provide a little bit of pressure. But then you need to keep so many cards to do plays like that, and you would just get like blasted on the on the back end. Yeah, like your your most efficient hand is uh swing sword, blade runner red, swing sword again. So that's like seven damage. Mm -hmm. Uh, if they block, then it's like up to nine damage. Yeah, that makes like your two card hand. Yeah, that, yeah, two card hand. So that yeah, she can be very efficient if she needs to. Uh, the problem is you need to be able to somehow push damage over and then yeah. keep up with the uh, faster decks. Yeah. No, we'll see. Uh, Yichin, talk to me about the Golden God. Yeah, Victor. So um, when he was spoiled, I was pretty excited. Um, I will say that as the spoilers went on, I got a little bit less excited, mostly because um, it seemed like that his deck wasn't very high power in Limited. But obviously, in con constructed, that's going to be a little different. So, um, general approach is um, pretty standard Guardian Fair, where you're 
going to try and outvalue your opponent, um, except you have cards like Trounce and Boast that can basically get you extra blocking value in the matchups that need it. So, like, if you block with Trounce and you win both clashes and you block with Boast, that's 10 block for two two cards, which is yeah. pretty sweet. Uh, so, you basically, you're always aiming to win your clashes. You're always going to be trying to run as many, like, high power blues as possible because you want to make sure that you're winning enough that you don't need to spend your gold on the reclashes. clashes um, Yeah. Like the hero you're, ability. Yeah. You want like you you don't have too many ways to make gold really. Like you can you can play wage gold and you can play like test the strength, but uh if you're gonna be defensive and you want to like maximize the use of Miller's grindstone, you want to make sure that you're getting as much value out of your blues as possible. So um Kind of take it as like you start off with like Cranio Crush, Macho Grande, um, and then what's the other eight power? Thunderquake, um, blues, and then you just add as many like six power blues as possible. Uh, yeah. One card that I found was pretty fun to play with was Righteous Cleansing because uh, not only is it a 10 power yellow, uh, but it also <laughs> uh, lets you set up your next uh, clash. Or if you hit it with its crush effect, you set up the next clash to um, basically. And help ensure that you can win. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's a overall. It's a. It's gonna be a fun deck. It's gonna be a deck that feels a lot like old him, um, but with less instant speed shenanigans and more just like efficient cycles. Mm -hmm. Without a crown of seeds. Yeah, no crown of seeds, unfortunately. Uh, but that means you aren't locked to running Rampart, which is not a great card, and you can yeah. run his super cool gold shield. Uh, which a has legendary up, shield. Yeah, which has come up a, a bit with, with the extra gold claws. Um, yeah, but yeah. That's true. Um, overall, uh, I have a build that's like you have six outlets for gold, and other than that, you're basically focused on outvaluing the opponent and then grinding them down slowly. Yeah, that makes sense. I I, I admit when Victor came out, I was just like, gold. The golden sun reminded me of like kind of. Oh, here's Oldham with Oak and Old. Here's like the big payoff. Here's Victor, a Golden Sun. Here's the one attack with like good payoff. And it's like, oh, maybe you do Golden Sun cycling with like Grindstone and try to like go second cycle and just Golden Sun the shit out of them with like 10 overpower, 10 overpower. Like, but like, yeah. I don't know how reasonable that is. 10 overpower is good, but it's like, it's it's not like 10 dominate where you're like, okay, I'm guaranteed yeah. to, fi or I'm pretty guaranteed to finish off this opponent. And yeah. if your opponents are committed to blocking out, you basically just have to outvalue them uh, and win the grind race. Yeah. Um, so like ten overpower is good, but in a late game scenario, um, it's you have to get to the late game, game first. Yeah, you have to get to the yeah. late game first, and you have to make sure that you can actually set up a golden sun win, or yeah. a Mancha grande win, or you know whatever. Yeah. the The last thing I'll say is I do feel like there's such a big influx of armor this set, like good mm -hmm. armor, like upgrades, temper twos. Uh, that it's just like every hero now has like there or related to the class has like easy access to temper twos. So I feel like overpower becomes not dominate to a lesser extent, but like overpower becomes a lot more tenuous, I guess, because you can still just use Dereax, whereas the dominate yeah. gets through regardless. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll kind of see where where he shines. No pun yeah. intended. The idea is that you'd have the crush decks that entice your opponent to use the armor there. Um, yeah. So hopefully. Hopefully they they overblock your righteous cleansings and your spinal crushes and not your golden sun. Yeah, of course not. All right, Rob. I know you play a little bit time. of KO. Yeah, it's, I play it's, it's in KO blitz. Time. I'm in talking blitz, about the blitz yeah, version, right? <laughs> of course. Yeah. Just so roll. They uh, they released the adult version of KO, armed and dangerous, uh, which I thought was kind of funny because. It, it seems like they took this very kind of ver um, volatile young hero and made him into like a pretty consistent old hero uh, because any card that has five attack now becomes six attack if it's not on the field. Um, so because of that, a lot of your effects that rely on that draw or discard, draw and discard mechanic uh, are now a lot more consistent. Um, like your pulpings, your wild rides, um, even uh, your berserk now which um was a card that was rarely played more into like fringe combo decks but now it becomes more of a real thing in this version of ko because um you're very likely going to be discarding six attack cards and a lot of those actually are your your blues too so if you draw blues um 
they become fodder for the draw and discard mechanic. Uh, there are some pretty cool ones you can wear in, in KO now. Um, they release Pack Call Blue, which is interesting. Uh, it is a five power, so it becomes six in the KO deck. Uh, very good for yep. more consistency as well. Uh, it helps fill to the top of your deck. You can keep those six powered cards on top, uh, which is very nice. Uh, Agile Windup is one that's pretty cool as well. Uh, it is a two block, but it is a five attack blue that on occasion can give you one agil agility token to power up your next turn. Um, um, other ones like Riled Up Blue, uh, very nice as well. But beyond the blues, you can now start running a lot of yellows that weren't possible in other Reinar um, sorry, the Brute decks. Uh, such as the yellow pulpings, which are five, not become six. Uh, yellow wild rides as well. Uh, and more notably, East Strike, which is a funny one because it was run in actually in Reinhardt quite a bit, but now it can actually be discard fodder for your, your combos. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Very cool inclusion, I think, to the, to the KO list. Um, so the deck is going to play out uh, pretty consistently, I think. Going to be very give or take. A give and take because you do get that extra might token hopefully every turn if you discard a six power card so it lends yeah. you know every turn you get one extra power which is very nice um so you can effectively block a few cards you know swing with one one action um get an extra might token for your next turn and kind of keep that going um for a very you know above rate kind of turn but yeah. i think the power of the deck will really come from your blood rush and your berserk combos if you can get them off so um it's probably wise to keep one of those in arsenal and then wait till you draw the second piece um one downside i think to blood rush though is that you don't have two claws anymore because ko only has one arm now which is kind of funny so you do have to rely on more of your attack action cards to deal more most of the damage so you do need to run things that do give some way go again in some way so the agility token will help a lot with that but Wild Ride and Pulping, I think, will be key um, in this deck. Um, and yeah, the new card said Packing is one heck of a card, so I think that's going to see a lot of play in every Brute deck across the board, uh, yeah. and KO is no exception. So um, yeah, I think that's what I have for KO. Yeah, yeah KO is definitely... Uh, you go Wild Ride Pulping, you just don't block, because they can't block. But That's a good point, too, I actually. Feel like... <laughs> yeah. A lot of cards don't yeah. really block. Yeah, I feel like there's going to probably be a fine line with how much you want to run no blocks yeah. and how much you want to, like, possibly use cards like No Fear, uh, like Runner Runner, like just mm. agility-based uh, agility bases, and then cards that let you, like, help block. Not really block. No Fear doesn't block, but prevent. Um, to get around, like, dominate over power, stuff like that. So that'll yeah. be interesting. To There's also, um, I forgot to mention, Rally the Rear Guard Yellow. If you want to run that, it's a five power. That also helps. You can, you can <laughs> run you that. Some I'm more not armor. touching that. No, 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 no. You gotta, I run, you gotta run Amulet of Haven Call 2 to yeah. block for five out of nowhere. <laughs> Amulet oh, of Haven. I forgot, I forgot to yes. talk about his specialization, actually, the Reckless Charge. So that's a blue that came out uh, fairly late in the, in the spoiler cycle. I was like... Don't we have scab skins? <laughs> I was like, why is that on a card now? I'm like, maybe they don't want us to run scab skins in these in these decks, but it's like What else would you run? I, I don't know. That's the problem. So I like my three health, thank you very much. I, I'll take that. Yeah, three that. health. And now you're just putting the same effect on a card with no go again. I think if it gave go again, there might be some merit to playing it because it's like a no risk scab skin roll. Yeah. But even at that, it's like not great. So um, I don't know. I'm probably like, not going to play that card, to be honest. You got you got to stack it with your sick skins to get five action points. I know. <laughs> I was like, you're not going to run both, right? <laughs> or do both. You in might as well just turn. run ready to roll at this point. Yeah, just, just ready to just roll. Scab in. Just get six action points and you're good. <laughs> and do nothing. Are you running? Uh, are you running cast bones? That card's. I really was interesting. very interested in that card. Uh, I'm not running in the first iteration of the deck, but I might consider it. Um, it can be very very good, but no go again so you have to kind of commit to it and you don't really know what your next hand's going to give you so it you know risk reward kind of thing um yeah. but it does block three which is nice so i think that Plus alone three. might make me want to play it yeah yeah block three, three and then... in a mountain attack i think yeah. each was literally about you, to say this you do <laughs> yeah you do kind of dilute your deck a bit with non-attacks that was the other reason yeah i think the deck i have now has like only nine cards that don't have six attack in it so it's really going for that like six power consistency but there might be room for it. Just gotta find the room. No, it's fair. Uh, I'll end with Olympia. Olympia is like, <laughs> I I 
I think I like his specialization. Like, I like his specialization almost the most. Well, I, I don't really count KOs. KOs are just random. I don't really, mm -hmm. I don't really get to see too much play. But as far as the ones who I think we're going to see play, I like Olympias a lot. As far as the flavor of the card, I've never seen Y on a Fab card before. It's the first time I've seen yeah. Y on the Fab card. I can't <laughs> wait to see Z. Y. Yeah. It's our first Y. I can't wait to see Z, and then I'll just go play Yu-Gi-Oh! again. Mm -hmm. But, like, X, y, Z. it's... I liked it a lot, and it just reminded me a lot of just like having your powerful M's in the blue slot, like glints and stuff like that. But the payoffs just made a lot more sense. So I'm running my deck. I tried a little bit of hatchets, and I tried a little bit of one handed swords, like either sabers or like saber hot streak. I'll, I, I probably not more than like 10 games or something. I don't have infinite amounts of time, but I really didn't think he converted that well in one handed builds. And I'm obviously, like, I'm missing something. Like, uh, print this hero that does nothing. But uh, it it felt a little bit like I just kept getting out-chunked or out-valued. Or it's just, like, nothing I did. And I was running a Dynamo, and I was just, like, trying to play a a more, like, low-high build. So, like, I'd have more a couple blocking turns and then set up for, like, a bigger turn, that kind of thing. Uh, it never really worked that well. And the value game with one-handed hatchets doesn't work that great either in my opinion uh so i went to decimator great axe and the main reason i remember this card existed because of those dory builds that ran them as fatigue <laughs> otherwise i would not remember this weapon existed but then i read that like well olympia is based on his um like his, his hero abilities like each time one of your attack wins a wager right but in general his kit runs really well off the chest piece grains of blood spill right and so blood spill is when a weapon attack hits so i the decimator great axe is the one that like literally just makes it harder to for your opponent to block out because it has the first attack attack action i think yep uh it, right, it, no, yeah. it's, any, it's card so oh just so. card yeah any not equipment yeah yeah, yeah. At first time a non-equipment you just halves which is like it's pretty good because like it just makes blocking this card so much more inefficient for your opponent and it allows me to like maximize maximize grain of blood spill and then get value to the point where i can add an extra card here and there to block with save life but still have enough like vigor and stuff like that to play out my turn the same way and that's kind of like the mindset so you outvalue them by attacking hitting and making it really awkward so i'm running essentially everything that gives you uh, agility uh and then like because you just you just need it with something like axe so you you run quite a few blues i have about 27 i think you can go up to like 30 if you wanted to uh i think 27 for me was kind of the sweet spot so i'm running because you know gray axe costs three and you just val outvalue them with axe and then you run things like lead with speed uh double down is really really good because you don't have a lot of uh strict gold payoffs other than like just recycling your hand double down's a very good payoff for the gold um commanding performance one of like kind of the key cards that came out here uh one for three to the end of the turn warrior gets when it defended one more attack actually destroy the defending arsenal so it's more like cards that incentivize your opponent to like oh so if you defend there goes your arsenal but it's like if you don't i get all my tokens kind of thing so i want to go into that cycle a lot and then you have like some of the other cards obviously up the antis in there take the upper hand some runner runners to go with the agility and just playing towards that goal uh i will say that it it is kind of difficult into i i think there might be some difficulties into guardian depending on how they build it uh just because like decks will just a lot of reactions and decks that are able to like prevent damage might struggle because you're not like like you're not effectively blocking you're just preventing damage right mm -hmm. so i think that might struggle i didn't play into any of those decks on great x but I it might uh, playing up the ante feels great though because I have so many blues on the Decimator Great Axe build. I, I usually always have two blues to play with up the ante. Like I played up the ante, pitch a blue, and just get all my stuff. Whereas like I was a little bit worried. I was playing a little bit less blues in the one-handed builds because you just didn't need them. But now this actually like favors a little bit more on the blue side. So I, I, I like this I liked this build the most and that's kind of what I'm going to be going with for my, for my first iteration of uh, official playtesting <laughs> for Spark and Mediocrity. Um... Yeah. So those were the heroes. I will pose one question before we cut it off. Which which one of these heroes is the best hero? Like, which one was like overall? You think will have the strongest impact on the meta? <laughs> Whatever the meta happens to be. Hmm. Ko. I think it's Ko. 
Okay. The berserker runs? No, the one armed, armed and dangerous. Yeah. 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 We'll see. Armed danger. Hopefully I can do it. There's a why he has one arm. Because he's so broken. <laughs> he's so yeah. he's so dangerous. He had to take uh, an, he had to take an arm away. Otherwise, he's just too good. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Then your blood rush turns are just like. I yeah. Kind of kind kind of stupid. Yeah, you get a but... lot more go again now with yellow pulpings, yellow, yellow everything. <laughs> it's not bad. Well, oh, just agility. Just agility. Too. Everything needs go again. Um, I think like two swing bigs. I, th I think like just runner runner is disgusting card if you have runner runner is absolutely disgusting I, I think it's Shoot. like Loki it's like the, I think that's the best attack to come out of this set and that's with a lot of competition mm -hmm. yeah that's true no I, I yeah, probably KO but like you know what we'll see maybe <laughs> we'll find out I think I've seen some like interesting Victor stuff out there I, I'm not I'm not totally sold on Betsy I'm also not really totally sold on any of the Warriors yet as far as like impact right away, because uh, other classes obviously got some stuff. But that was it for the primer. We tried to keep this um, a lot shorter than the last one because we're not gonna yeah. <laughs> spoil any of the the big brain insights we've obviously collected over the last week because that's how this that's how mediocrity works. In case anyone didn't know, <laughs> yeah, but we're just a well of information. We are a well of information. Um, Reminds me of Poison the Well, the card. But anyways, so we're going to have the gameplay coming out on both channels uh, for the respective decks, and then we'll have deck techs at the very end on the respective channels. So we'll have a K Olympia, Betsy, and then on OK and Y, you'll see the Kasai and Victor, if they do it. See, now I've said it out loud. So now, they, now they have to do <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, now they have to do it. <laughs> now they have to do it. They have to do it, because I've just put them on the spot. I'll do it again. I'll tweet it for my, like, 10 viewers. I'll just tweet yeah. it. Do and, it. Uh, you have we'll to do it. it. We'll do it. We'll do um, it. And with that, hopefully everyone enjoyed the first episode of season four of Spark and Mediocrity. And with that, from wherever you're watching in the world, have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Bye for now.